In this video, we are going to talk about the direct materials budget. Now, I know the first time you see a direct materials budget, it looks really overwhelming. There are tons of lines, there's a lot of information, and it looks like it's a lot of work. But I want to kind of give you some perspective on this. So the direct materials budget, the purpose of this budget is to basically calculate how much our material is going to cost and how much we're going to purchase. So if you look at this budget and you draw a line above where it says total paper for production and then you draw another line above where it says cost per sheet, this portion of the budget between these two lines should look really familiar to you. That's because if you did the production budget you just did this part. So the direct materials budget is a lot like the production budget. There's a couple lines above, there's a couple lines below, but the heart of the budget is just like production. Okay, so don't get overwhelmed by this. So when you're doing your direct materials budget, the point of the budget is to take the units that you were going to produce Okay, so notice we start with units to be produced on this one. Convert it to material. Then go through all your calculations with desired ending inventory and beginning inventory. And then figure out how much material you're going to purchase. Right, so that's why I say total paper to be purchased. Then figure out how much it's going to cost. Okay, so let's take this step by step. We'll go through it, you know, we'll go through it slowly. And then this problem actually requires two direct materials budgets, one for the paper and one for the stickers. So in the next video, we'll do the second one. Okay, so let's go through the information that we have from the problem. If you want to download this problem, click the link in the description and you can download the entire problem. So each airplane is going to use half a sheet of paper. Okay, so basically 0.5 sheets, half a sheet of paper. And right now we're just going to focus on the paper. Each sheet um, of paper costs a dollar. Okay, so there's our cost per unit. The company would like to maintain materials inventory equal to 10%. Okay, so 10% of next month's production. Well, that sounds a lot like the production budget, right? At the end of 2012, the company believes we'll have 1,500 sheets of paper. Okay, so that's what it has at the end of 2012. Um, the company would like to have 2,500 sheets of paper on hand at the end of March. So that kind of sounds like ending inventory, huh? Okay. And then it talks about how they're going to pay for the materials. Okay, so we'll talk about that in another video. Okay, so we have the information we need. So we're going to start with units to be produced. So up here in the corner, I've got my production. Okay, and we got this right off the production budget. So if you watch the production budget video, these numbers should look really familiar. So I'm going to start with that. Okay, so I'm going to write that in. 38,000 for January, 49,000 for February, 26,000 for March. Okay, and then my total is 113,000. Okay, so it's right off the production budget. So now, the second line asks us paper per unit. So remember we said we're going to take our production and we're going to convert it into paper. Okay, so this is how many airplanes we need to make. So now let's convert that to paper. The problem says half a sheet of paper, right here, half a sheet of paper. So that would mean 0.5 units of paper. And then, so we're going to calculate how many sheets of paper that actually is. Okay, so we're just going to multiply. So 38,000 times 0.5 is 19,000. 49,000 times 0.5 is 24,500. 26,000 times 0.5 is 13,000. And then 113,000 times 0.5 is 56,000.
500. Okay, so now we're talking about paper, right? So from here on in, we're going to be talking about paper. We're not talking about airplanes. So now I have to do my desired ending inventory. So remember, desired ending inventory is the amount of inventory I want to have to start off the next month. So the company would like to maintain materials inventory equals 10% of next month's production. So that means that for February, if we need 24,500 sheets of paper, the company would like to have 10% of that on hand at the beginning of, I'm sorry, at the beginning of February. So that means at the end of January. So 24,5 times 10% is 2,450. So notice that's the exact same thing that we did when we did the production budget. Okay, so the desired ending, ending inventory for February, we want 10% of March's need. Okay, so 10% of 13,000 in inventory at the end of February. Okay. Now for March, I don't have April's production, but what they do tell me is this is the company would like to have 2,500 sheets of paper. Okay, so we know that that one is 2,500. Okay, now what about our total column? So think back to production. How do we do this on production? Remember that my, my quarter runs from January through March and I'm looking for the ending inventory. Okay, so this would be March 31st, would be my end, which is the same as March, March's desired ending inventory. Okay, so on March 31st, we already said we want 2,500, so that means that for my total column, I'm gonna use 2,500 as well. Okay, total need, we're going to add these two together, right? Because I want the paper for production plus the ending inventory. So 19,000 plus 2450 is 21,450. 24,500 plus 1,300 is 25,800. For March I want 13,000 plus the 2,500 so that is 15,500 and then my total column 56,5 plus 2,500 is 59,000 okay now beginning inventory okay so the problem tells us that at the end of 2012, right, so on December 31st, 2012, the company believes it will have 1,500 sheets of paper. So that's my beginning inventory because December's ending inventory becomes January's beginning. Remember that from production? Okay, so February, January's ending inventory becomes February's beginning inventory. So that number flows down. Okay, same thing for March. February's ending becomes January's beginning. Okay, now beginning inventory. So remember, my quarter goes from January to March. So January 1st would be the beginning of the quarter. So that means we're going to take. January's beginning inventory. So that's 1,500. All right, so now I just got to do the math. So my total paper to be purchased, 21,450 less beginning inventory. So we're going to subtract. So that is 19,950. Subtract 25,800 minus 2,450, and that gives me, let's see, 23,350. 15,5 minus 1,300 is 14,2. 
and 59,000 minus 1,500 is 57,500. Okay, so now we're at the point like this, right? This is the end of the production budget looking piece, okay? Now we're going to start talking about, okay, so if I want to purchase 19,950 um, pieces of paper, how much is that going to cost? Well, my cost is $1 per sheet. So I'm going to multiply 19,950 by a dollar, so that's 19,000. Nine hundred fifty dollars. Twenty three three fifty times a dollar is twenty three thousand three fifty. So this is easy because it's a dollar, right? Multiply fourteen two hundred by a dollar, and that gives me fourteen thousand two hundred dollars. And fifty seven five hundred times one dollar is fifty seven thousand five hundred dollars. Now remember we said on the production budget, at the end of your budget, I can do the math down and I can do the math across and the numbers should come out the same. So if you add up 19,950 plus 23,350 plus 14,200, the total is 57,500. Okay, and remember we said in the production budget video, that typically the two places you'll make errors if those numbers don't agree is with your desired ending inventory or with your beginning inventory. So it's usually one of those two numbers. So if you have any questions on this budget, please make sure to leave a comment at the bottom. If you like the video, please like it and share it. Um, and we're going to do one more direct materials budget um, in order to do the direct materials for the star decals for the stickers. Alright, thanks so much. See you soon.